In this video, we'll cover the lighting properties relevant for a GPU or real-time ray trace. This video is part of a series on ray tracing, and there is a separate video to cover the relevant lighting properties for the CPU ray trace, as the way that each ray tracer calculates light and the settings used are a bit different. In this video, we're going to discuss adjusting the sunlight, the daytime backdrop intensity, and adjusting lights in the plan, including creating light sets and added lights. I'm going to start out in a very basic plan to illustrate a few things about the way the software handles light, and then we'll transition to a more complete plan afterwards. So I'm going to draw four walls, and then use my full camera to place myself in this room. Then I'm going to immediately switch to my GPU ray trace, by going to my rendering techniques and selecting physically based ray trace. So as you can see, when we don't have any lights placed in this plan, the software will automatically place a floating light in the middle of the room. If I place a light by going to my electrical tools and placing my default light, which in this case is a recessed light, as soon as I place a light in the scene, the initial light in the middle goes away. Then if I continue placing light in this room, the more lights I place, the more it will distribute light around the room. Now, in Chief Architect, all lighting is relative to each other. So watch what happens when I open up this light, and I change it from the default 1200 lumens to something much larger, like 5000. Not only does that area of the room grow brighter, but the rest of the room becomes a bit darker by comparison. So we'll want to be careful to evenly distribute light as much as possible around a room, unless we're looking to spotlight a particular area. The same principle applies to sunlight. So watch what happens when I place a window along this wall. The sun is set by default to be 100,000 lumens, which is the actual brightness of the sun at midday on a sunny day. But that 100,000 lumens is much, much larger than the 1200 lumens of each of these lights and therefore essentially overpowers it. None of the other lights are registering much by comparison. When I add and delete lights when I have sunlight streaming in, it's not going to have much of an effect on the scene, which is true to life. When the sun comes in on a sunny day, whether or not you have lights inside the house turned on is not going to make a big difference to the overall lighting of the room. So in order for the lights inside the space to register in our GPU ray trace, we'll want to turn down the sun's intensity. You also might notice that the light coming in through the window is exceedingly bright. As mentioned, the lighting is calculated based on real world data. In the real world, our eyes eventually expose the difference between the exterior and the interior light. Think about what happens when you come up from a dark room like a basement into a room with a lot of windows on a sunny day. If you were to try to take a photo of that scene, it would probably look a lot like this. But much like a good photographer, we can use the settings in the program to model lighting so that the interior and exterior lights are more evenly exposed. So let's jump into a full plan to illustrate this. I'm going to create a full camera view in the great room of this plan, and then change over to my GPU ray trace. Again, you'll see that the interior is fairly dark by comparison to the exterior. It's a great early morning rendering, but may not be the look we're going for for a midday one. So we're going to adjust the sunlight in two ways. The first is through the camera view lighting tools here in the architectural toolbar. Then we'll select adjust sunlight. We can place a sun angle in the plan, which will determine the light based on the time of day and time of year or we can model using a generic sun, which is what I'm going to do now. As you can see, the sunlight is set at 100,000 lumens. Most of the lighting in my plan, however, is set around 1,200 lumens. So to even things out, I'm going to adjust this down to about 5,000. I can also adjust the angle of the sun if I want to change where it is coming in on my plan. The tilt angle is its relation to the horizon. Negative 90 degrees would be straight down in the plan, like a perfect noon sun. And zero degrees would be straight forward, like a sun setting on a prairie. The direction angle is in relation to 360 degrees around the plan. Zero degrees would point directly to the right. 
You can also change the color of the sun, but I don't usually recommend this unless you're going for sort of an intense sunset look, because it will wash that color over the entire scene. When I select OK, we're not going to see much of a change yet, because there's a second sunlight setting for GPU ray traces coming from the backdrop itself. When we adjust one of the two sunlight settings, we'll want to adjust the other two. To change it, I'm going to go to my rendering techniques and select technique options. We'll look at this in more detail in a later video, but for right now, what I want to change is the daytime backdrop intensity here. Basically, the program is extracting sunlight from the backdrop, and the intensity here is also based on real-world data. But if we want to even the exposure, we'll want to drop this down quite a bit. The value I put in here can vary, but I'll typically go with 500 or less. So now you can see the details of the backdrop through the window. Remember that all the values mentioned in this and other videos on ray tracing are just suggestions. Rendering is an art form, and you may have a very different preference on the way renders look than I do, and they will sometimes vary depending upon the scene as well. So now let's take a look at the lights inside our plan. I'm going to first open up an individual light to look through the settings. Light fixtures are essentially an orb of light attached to an object. You can decide where on that object the light sits. So, for instance, in this pendant, the light is sitting 32 inches down from the base of the light. When you increase the height of a pendant, as I have done with this light, increasing it to 48 inches tall, you'll also want to increase the light's distance from its base. In a light like a chandelier, you might also have multiple light sources that are distributed around the object. If you want, you can select this option to show the light's position in a camera view, so you can see where exactly the light is emanating from in relation to the fixture. Notice that you also have control over whether or not the light is turned on in camera views, which includes GPU ray traces, or if it is on for CPU ray traces, or for both. You can also decide if a light casts shadows. Sometimes, for lights like chandeliers or pendants, I'll turn off shadows to eliminate the shadow lines created by the fixture, which can sometimes overwhelm a rendering. We can also adjust the intensity of the light, which we did earlier when we placed the recessed light, and we can change the type of light. A point light does not have the same amount of control as a spotlight. A point light will radiate light in all directions equally, a spotlight, on the other hand, can focus the light in a particular direction. Tilt angle and direction angle are the same values we talked about earlier in relation to sunlight. Negative 90 degrees will point the light straight down. The cutoff angle defines the cone of light, from 0 to 180 degrees. Right now it's set to have a 60 degree cone, which would focus the light in a fairly narrow area. An open bulb like this light would probably have 180 degrees. A track light pointing at an art fixture might have something like a 30 degree cutoff angle. The drop rate here defines how intense the light is as it moves away from the fixture. Light is not as intense 100 feet away from a light source as it is 1 foot away. Remember that some light fixtures have multiple light sources, so any changes you make in this dialog, you might need to make for each light in the fixture. Sometimes, you might want to add light to an area of a scene that doesn't already have a fixture. For example, maybe you have a detail under a bar that you want to highlight. This is where added lights can come in. Added lights are lights that are not attached to any physical fixture in the plan. We'll place added lights in the plan view. You can find them in the camera view lighting tools here. We can simply click to place one in the plan, or you can click and drag if you want to place a light that automatically points in a particular direction. If we double click to open this up, I can specify what the height I want this to be at is. With added lights, we want to typically not have them too close to the ceiling, the floor, or any walls or objects, so we're not creating strange glows within the rendering. We also have the same light data options that we had within the light fixture we looked at earlier. So going back to our camera view, the last thing we want to do with our lights in this view is to establish a light set. 
Light sets allow you to control which specific lights are on in each camera view. I recommend having a light set for every ray trace you do. We can establish a light set by going again to our camera view lighting tools and selecting Adjust Lights. Right now, our lighting is set to Automatic, which means the program is going to do its best to find up to 20 relevant lights to the scene. But I find the best practice is to tell the program specifically which ones we're interested in. So I'll switch over to Light Set, but before I do, I want to make sure that I uncheck this box that says Update Lighting Automatically. When I switch over to my light set, it will switch me to what's called the default light set, which will turn on every light in my plan. If you have a large plan with a lot of lights like this one, that's a lot of lights for the program to have to calculate. And I don't want the view automatically updating to try to handle all of that. So I'll uncheck that first and then change over to a light set. To create a new light set, we're going to select New set, give it a name that establishes where in the house we are, and then choose the lights that are relevant for the scene. In this case, I want all of my great room lights. Then I'll select Done, and you can see that it greatly improves the overall lighting of the scene, most especially in the area that's furthest from the camera. This image is still not bright enough for my liking, but that's because we haven't done anything with our camera or image properties yet. Again, this video is in a series of videos on ray tracing. There is a video specifically on GPU ray trace camera and image properties, so you'll want to watch that one next.